What up, everybody? This is Hollywood Unlocked Uncensored. I'm Jason Lee. Melissa Ford. Giovanni. And we have the one and only Nikki Baby in the building. Hey, guys. Hey. So, Nikki, are you are you ready? Are you ready? <laughs> I'm and ready. I am subjected to not answer anything I don't feel like, so let's go. She's been through media training her publicist in the back. Okay. Oh, no. This so, is just my beautiful mind and my own So, mind. Nikki is a friend, so let's just start with saying a friend. We're on Love & Hip Hop together. We're actually yes. real friends. We're real friends. Real homies. Like in real life. Like we really eat brunch together. <laughs> Do we do brunch? I know we do late. Oh, well, it's usually after a long late yeah, night. Yeah. But yeah, we're in. <laughs> Let's not go into details, so, Jason. So last, se- so last season, the audience has just been all on Twitter, all on my Twitter, saying that they don't know how me and Nikki become real friends. When last season, there was a scene where I was basically telling her, go fuck herself, and that I was yeah. going to kill her on the blog. <laughs> yeah, so, basically. So let me just clear it up. So last season, Nikki and I had a, we didn't know each other. No, at, at all. At all. That doesn't mean that I'm not as popular as she because I'm popping too in my own way. But yeah, we didn't know each other. We didn't know each other. And we were put in a scene that a couple scenes where there was some conflict. Right. And uh, her friend threw a drink in my face. Brandy, little Brandy threw a drink in my face. Yeah. And I felt some type of way. And so uh, anyway, we had our little fallout. And then there were things that happened outside of the show in her personal life with her brother passing. Everybody that knows me knows my brother passed. And I just felt as a human being, as a friend, just as a person, Mm -hmm. like, you know, I wanted to I reached out to to make sure she was cool. And we just became cool. That's it. That's basically the rundown. So why do people think that we're why do people think that we're fake though? Because we get along. Because people, people go off what they see on TV. People unfortunately are a little small minded and just believe whatever it is they see. But I guess it is whatever you can't blame them because it's like whatever you put on TV. That's the only like ten minutes that they know of you. Mm-hmm. You know, so people just run with it. They feel like since you have beef on TV, you're supposed to argue for years later. For example, Masika and I, they think that we're still supposed to be three years later. You know, I'm 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 growing as a person, so I'm not really on that old shit anymore, you know? Mm-hmm. So that's probably why they feel like, you know, we're fake friends or whatever it is, you know? Mm. And just so for people who you can now stop tweeting me, we're real friends. It's not TV shit. Nobody Mona didn't call me and say that I get a pay increase if I become friends with Nikki Baby. <laughs> <laughs> is that what cool. people really actually thought? That's yeah. really they really ignorant. they really don't understand. I mean, you can get in a fight in one scene in ten minutes of your life mm-hmm. and over two years you can't build a friendship. People, it's crazy. Yeah, no, people go crazy over the Love and Hip Hop franchise. Like, they really, really do. And you are um, of particular interest <laughs> this season. You've got everybody talking. That's um, great. It is. You know, and you, and you I, know I love so your cra- attitude about that. Thank you. Wait, can I just tell you, like, Melissa Ford does not make friends with a lot of people. No. But you really like Nikki. I do. You I mean- do. She is hysterical. <laughs> Hysterical. Anyone that can make me laugh is good. Is good. good Thank people. you, Melissa. So the yeah. first day Melissa became acquainted to you through me was we, me and her were driving to Le Petit for for a meeting, and I you had called me on my phone, but I don't think at first you knew Melissa was in the car, but you were talking on the speakerphone, and you're just fucking hilarious. What? Like you're literally a production. <laughs> I'm glad I make you guys laugh. I that's, mean, that's it's, a quality to have, especially with a beautiful woman. And you funny. Psh, well, on. I love I love how confident she is in her in yeah. herself. And no matter what anybody has to say about her, she it doesn't change her own opinion of herself, which is pretty fantastic. And having gone through the industry myself, right. you know, that's not you always, know it's a really it's hard. Tough. Yeah, yeah it, with all the opinions and the negative things people say. So you know, you got to really be strong headed to deal with all that. Yeah, I mean, like, so what's your you know just. For my own personal knowledge, like what's your support group look like? I mean, like what's your fan? I know you lost your brother and, you know, condolences, but what is your family life like? Because I don't that really doesn't get that well, part of you doesn't get to be. My seen family on the show. is just like, you know, they think that my family's crazy because they own strip clubs and mm-hmm. they are swingers and wild. But it's absolutely opposite. My parents have been married for 39 years. Mm-hmm. My family and my dad, especially they don't go in the clubs. They don't even deal with that, mm-hmm. you know, so it's just they they're just like. It's just us, us, me, my sister, and, you know, we are in the house. And it's just, you know, we went to school. We had education, you know. Mm -hmm. My family always told us to do the right thing, work hard for what you believe in, Mm -hmm. you know, and all that, the right foundation, really. So I have a very supportive family for whatever it is I do. They support me. My parents know what kind of kids they raised. But you weren't the average, you know, teenager going to high school. You you were were driving a Bentley. Yeah, I heard you were pushing a Bentley in high school. (laughs) No, I was pushing a Range Rover in high school. Whatever. Okay. Same shit. (laughs) Yeah, but, you know, I mean, but I never had, like, you know, I've always been humble. I've never felt like I was better than anybody because I've had more than anybody because ultimately we come the same way and we go the same way. Mm-hmm. You know, I've never felt like I have to have these rich kid friends and I can't, you know, like my friends 
if I love you, you're my friend. If you need help with something, mm-hmm. I got you. You I know, mean, I don't you, look you, down on anybody. You do have celebrity friends, have. but your friend friends, like your circle is all yeah. just regular people. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. see her out a lot and we're like just super humble, super nice. Yeah. Like, like and it shocked me. I was like, damn, she's nice as fuck. Well, people, yeah. people people didn't understand why. I mean, people thought, you know, Jason Lee just wants to be friends with Nikki because she's the hottest girl on Love Hip Hop. I didn't say that that's what people are saying, mm-hmm. but you are the hottest girl on our show. <laughs> but that's not that's not necessarily true. I mean, everybody knows I love to be around a beautiful woman. I won't have sex with one, but um I, I like to be around <laughs> the Unless we're there's we're a, a lot of circumstances that must under the right. <laughs> no. <laughs> there has to be a lot of money involved in some liquor. <laughs> so the thing I loved about Nikki, though, while we were filming the show, you had here she was going to school every day, getting her degree from USC, which she's graduated from. Wow. Oh, congratulations. Um, yeah, I, wow. I was literally driving people. I hate when they say I paid for my education. That's so ignorant. Yeah. I literally woke up like wait, wait, first. Let me, let me say this. Okay, filming, her filming schedule is way more intense. Uh, crazy. Than you, yeah. Oh, I yeah. mean, like filming like every day, mm-hmm. going to school every morning. Mm-hmm. Uh, launching her businesses, helping her family with the strip clubs, and still having a social life. Yeah, that it is was really, you know, because when I first started, this is my third season. First mm-hmm. season, I had a semester left when I was in doing love and hip hop. I promised my mom, I was like, if I do this, I'm going to finish school. Mm -hmm. So second season came and she's like, you made a promise to me. I, you know, you spent so much money on your education just to let it go. And I felt like so bad. So I was like, you know what? Second season, I was like, I I have one more semester. So while I was filming, I went back to school. Mm -hmm. I got up at six in the morning, drove there nine to five Mm -hmm. afterwards, went straight to set. Mm -hmm. So it was really hard on me, Mm -hmm. but plus I'm gone on the weekends Mm -hmm. and She's doing my businesses weekends. too. She's gone on the weekends because she's booked. Yeah. And then, you know, I have my own businesses that I'm running and starting too. So it was a lot, but I mean, I, I did it. Okay. So wait, what's it like, you know, going to USC, <laughs> attending class when <laughs> knowing, you're, you're, knowing you're on a ratchet show? I was fucking just, with not, not even that, but I mean, like, was, I'm sure you must cause such a disruption. How, I will how do the professors even deal with that? I just honestly would just, you know, you know, like you're very shapey too. Like I would just wear, you know, cover myself and I didn't go there. I didn't even make friends. I just went there to do my work and leave. Like I didn't even pay attention to anybody. But that that does not negate the fact that people are paying attention to I you. I mean, yeah. Because you, you and Melissa both have an ass when you walk in the room, people <laughs> right. look at that first. Like Gio has been looking at your breasts while you're sitting here. Just, <laughs> it's no, totally no, understandable, Gio. No, I was not. I was looking at the fishnets. <laughs> right. It's totally understandable. Uh-huh. It's no, but so back funny to that. when I sit around with guys, I don't even realize this here at my titties. Like, but they really do. I mean, I like the way she. I like the way she say titties. <laughs> oh my god! I mean, the titties are almost sitting on the counter, but whatever. Jason. Okay. So so the, the, so. <laughs> okay, so there's so much stuff that we want to talk so about. Here's here's a here's a real legit question, and this will obviously segue into a whole bunch of other co- you know conversation that we want to have with you. But being a a young lady of means, you don't need a man for money. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. So not. does that. How does how does that factor into the guys that you choose to date? Um, because you haven't been known to date a lot of guys with a lot of money. I haven't been known to date a lot of men, period. Mm-hmm. I don't really, but I'm very that, picky. Yeah, but mm-hmm. the, the ones that you've picked haven't been known to have Correct. a lot of money. Like you, So you come into the relationship very equal, or, or not even equal, you just come into the yeah. relationship having your own shit. Yeah. How does that work out? It doesn't. I think it's really, honestly, like, it's been very, I'm going to tell you guys, this is a real breakdown. It's been very hard for me to date a partner because I, I have grown, I'm only 26, but my mind is just much older. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I know what I bring to the table. Like most of the guys, I don't need you financially, but it's like, I want someone that motivates me. I want someone that's working as hard as me. Mm -hmm. I want someone that's equal as me. And a lot of times, a lot of men are intimidated because of my attitude or because of, the businesses my family has, they don't like that. So it takes a really confident person. And me, like, this is just keeping it all the way real. Like, I don't really care about sex. Mm-hmm. I don't even I don't even come from sex. So for me to oh, have a partner. I wouldn't be having it. I'm just saying, like, it's like, okay, if I fuck you, most of the time I'm pleasing you. Mm-hmm. And on top of it, it's like, I don't need you for your money. So it's like, what do you bring to the table? Like, what is it that's going to really make me want to be with you? Because mm-hmm. I know, like, if I'm doing something, it's mainly for you. Okay. So damn, so Gio, I, why are you looking at her like, like, like a, you're watching this is the, the first time I'm ever Jim hearing like it's coming like so you say you don't come from sex so what do you come no. from? That's all he got from what I she just normally, said. I just honestly, it like would that. have to be like orally, and that's only if the man really knows how to, or the so woman we were, knows really how to perform. Wait, wait, wait hold on. We Love were just it. talking about salami sandwiches earlier. <laughs> it's hot in here. No, it is. It is hot in here. Okay, so wait, you can't do that because it's my neighbor. note. Okay. Oh, God. Right. So let's talk I need about, your uh, no. some stuff that you were going through last season. So your brother, we both have a connection in real life. I lost a brother. You lost a brother. Have you talked about that at all publicly, like in terms of 
what um, happened and not really a little us uh, a little bit i mean like you know obviously when things happened it went all over social media but social media and you know is only one platform i never really have talked about it mm -hmm. i'm like a really private with my feelings i'm not an emotional person and you know as far as everybody knows i just try to keep things to myself because you know it's like an emotion it's really hard for me to talk about that type of subject yeah you got to keep something for yourself you can't but you, if i could help people so that's what i was that, gonna ask yeah. so like i for, would do it like for me when i lost my brother it was a very instant um unplanned in front of me experience where i i wasn't in a position to really help anybody because i was trying to help myself yeah um, for you, how did you find out and what, cause I know your family is really close. Like right. I've talked to her mom, her mother is uh, yeah. everything. Mm -hmm. And I know you're Sorry, really, guys, really, I'm sick. I know you're really, really close with your father. Yeah. How did you, how did you find out what happened and how did you all cope with it? Um, you're, we're still coping with it. I mean, I found out like my dad called me and he said like, he called my mom and I, and he said my dad brother wasn't feeling well. And then like, we just went to the hospital and it was basically over for us. You know, mm. the nurse was just kind of like, it's a little too late. And my mom wasn't really understanding. Like, she's like, what do you mean? Mm -hmm. And it was just kind of like a situation where it was, it was just, you know, it was in the hands of God. I don't know. We're still coping with it. It's only been a year for me. So it's, it's not something I've ever expected. To, I've never dealt with death at a you young two were age. Close? You two were close? Oh, yeah. Because you both have the same parents. You grew up together. What was the age difference between the two of you? Three years. And then me and my sister. No. Yeah. And then me and my sister are a year apart. Okay. So we were all like very close in age and, mm -hmm. you know, we all grew up together. We lived in the same house. So it was just, you know, we were all very close. He lived with my parents, you know, too. So it was just like, it's really hard to adjust. It's my only brother. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he helped a lot in the business. So, and then, you know, it's just, it's just not something I could really explain. It's really hard. So I always tell her mom, like, I'm your son now. She's like, her mother is very motherly. And the thing I love yeah. about Nikki is that, you know, if her parents are having a bad day, she'll literally won't go out. She won't hang out with her friends. She'll go yeah. spend time with her parents to make mm -hmm. sure that they're wow. good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll be with them a lot. Mm -hmm. So now you're on Love & Hip Hop. I just saw an interview you did with the, our friend Charlamagne in the Breakfast Club where they yeah. asked you why Love & Hip Hop because you do have money. Your family comes from money. You're educated. You're right. Why, why Love & Hip Hop? We kind of talked a little bit about it the other day, but why? So for those people who are wondering, why do you do Love & Hip Hop? Okay, so to clarify, like initially my boyfriend at the time was Molly Ma. So it wasn't something I planned on doing. It's like he had asked me and then it just was like, you know, Mona loved me and then we ended up, I ended up on the show. It wasn't like, oh, this is like my aspirations. And I'm very thankful for VH1 and the whole team for the show because, you know, it helped me, you know, with a platform. And, you know, I definitely, like a lot of people before just thought I was like this rich, spoiled girl and they didn't really know where my money came. Like they thought men took, supported me and took care of me or athletes or whatever, you know, the stereotype is. But now it's like people really got to see me for this boss and this person that I really am. I got to put it out front. So like it really helped me with my businesses as a platform. Mm -hmm. So it's like people before I didn't really know. And it's like that's why I did it, because I want people to see this is really who I am. Let me let me put it out there for you guys to understand. And so I took this position and I'm going to do something bigger with it, with my nude by Nikki, with my lines and everything, you know, with my family's club, like they got to see the real boss now. Well, uh, you know that we just, sorry, we, you know, we just had Shonda on, uh, sorry, Shonda Denise. Right. Shonda um, Denise, not, gotta, not Shonda Taylor, because she made it very clear that she's standing on her own. Exactly. And Shonda she was her Denise. employer once, you know that, right? I didn't know. She, she swung around the poles at Crazy Girls. Okay. I, I swung wow. with that that's your, that's your, that's your, that's your <laughs> crazy girls that's your family business yeah I've, my, I've never been there I keep getting no? invited I've never been you should go I should think I should we'll get you a lap dance on I me. think I will be there okay <laughs> before you go into the Shonda okay. Denise thing so um, do you want to tell the story about the time I, I, my first time you found me at crazy girls well me and Jason hung out at crazy girls and he got super drunk and I was like, where the fuck is Jason? Like, it was like three, four in the morning. I was like, okay, no, it's nobody's here. It's like time to go. Mm -hmm. And I'm searching and I just see this man laid out on the pole. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, picking him like, Jason, get up. Is I was trying to get a Jason check. get up. Let's go. Right now. I was up. I was you are to, not the dancer. Get up. I was trying to see if times got hard. You know, if I could if swing around could the pole. It. I just, it was, <laughs> so I don't know what the hell he did. Did you do a trick when I wasn't looking? No, I, don't know I just laid out on the stage. <laughs> Take me, Lord. That's okay, go ahead. hilarious. Sorry. So Shonda Denise was just on the show right. and you, you see the, you know, yeah, what yeah. her storyline, what she's kind of going through. And, you know, from a from the standpoint of somebody who's been on reality TV and had to deal with that, with the issues of combat, you know, conflict being solved by con combat. Yes. Um, 
his Willie's mistress shows up and Correct. basically starts a fight with her yeah. and proceeds to rip her wig off and try to beat her ass. Um, how have you dealt with the, you know, the conflict that has become physical? Because that shit is not, that shit is stressful knowing that you're walking into well, basically like a lion's den. You know, I'm going to tell you guys something. I am not a fighter and it's not just because I care about my looks. I've never been taught that in my life. Mm -hmm. I've never been in those situations where I've had to fight. Mm -hmm. And so for me, it's like, I feel like if there, if you can't use your words, there's, I went to school for communication. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I know how to speak with people. There's three different ways to say something if you want to get your point across, mm -hmm. if not more. Mm -hmm. So for me, I think if you can't communicate with somebody what you want to say, I think there's something wrong with you. Mm -hmm. I think that you have, unless you have some type of anger problem or you have some type of un instability or unhappiness within yourself. Mm -hmm. And I've noticed when people lash out with, you know, with fighting and doing all that, I don't know. I just don't find them to be all the way stable. Mm -hmm. Unless you get attacked, then it's totally different. So right. I've learned a lot about loving hip hop with Nick from Nikki, you mm -hmm. know, because last season I was only on three episodes. This season I'm on a lot more. And I feel like I'm a lot more comfortable and confident because I've learned from Nikki just to not give zero fucks. You you're on the show with people that pretty much don't hate you, don't like you. Right. So let's talk about uh, a couple of those people real quick. So Moniz, what is the issue with Moniz? Because she still talks about you online. I keep seeing her in interviews, bringing your name up. You know, I don't see you talking honestly, about her. What's going on? You're going to just have to ask her. I don't know. You know, as far as I know. I, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm focused on my business. Mm -hmm. The only people I fight with are my employees about some money. Mm -hmm. I don't argue <laughs> with people about anything else. Cause it's like, I don't mess with you. I don't mess with your baby daddy. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't even speak with you. Like we don't even, I don't even have your phone number. Like I don't talk to you, mm -hmm. you know? So for me, it's like this issue you have is in your own mind. Like mm -hmm. you're arguing with yourself. So, I don't know. So this season we found out that your boyfriend from that, your ex-boyfriend or the ex-guy that you were dating, right. Lil Fizz, was living with her. Correct. What is that about? You're going to have to ask him. I have my own place. <laughs> I don't really know what it's about. Yo, can you I know? ask you something? Did you really like him? You know, I, I really did like Fizz when I first met him. I, this is a problem with me. I know if I want to be with you after like three weeks. Mm -hmm. I'm serious. <laughs> like, I thank God because before I wasted a lot of time in relationships. Mm -hmm. Now it's like I've learned what I like. And I feel like, you know, me and him both went out of a breakup where we both were getting cheated on. So I think we leaned on each other. You know, we both understood each yeah. other what we were going through. So it was that. He's a great father and all that. I will never bash him. But, you know, I just feel like mentally it's, it's about lifestyle and compatibility. And we just we were just on we we're different. We didn't. He's a single father. You know, I think he's looking to settle down. Me, I'm a young woman. I'm just getting out of a heartbreak. I'm trying to, like, figure me out. So I think we were. And then, you know, may he rest in peace, my brother past like i'm not focused on a relationship i'm right. trying to make sure me and my family are good right now so, so it's kind of like an in the moment thing it, yeah both vulnerable. so, so, Fizz, so Fizz has been a little upset online too because you went on vh1 live and you basically said that safari was better in bed than Fizz. okay so you know <laughs> <laughs> shout out to safari That's i mean homie. you know he did say like monice was better in certain ways than me sexually and you know what for me i think that's so small-minded if you think someone else is better everyone is entitled to an opinion so how can you be mad at me for saying the truth did mm -hmm. you want me to just i don't know i mean as a man i guess you could see it's a little embarrassing but i was just saying the truth like how are you mad at me for saying my opinion mm -hmm. right but last season kamaya said that kamaya adams who's not on the show shout out to her she's engaged to, or yeah engaged to bradley bill from the wizards but mm -hmm. um she said that he couldn't get it up. Did you ever have that problem? Because we just talked about a man that <laughs> yeah, we just talked about a I, man not being able to get it up. Did you I've ever have that never problem? had that problem with anybody. So, and even in him, I wouldn't say he had that issue. So, no. I and Fizz is, a, Fizz is a good guy. You would agree he's a good yeah, guy. Yeah, he's a good guy. So he's a nice guy. I, feel I don't like really like what he's doing on the internet talking about me all because I said one comment about him. But, you know, when people are in their feelings, you know, yeah, you know that's things kind of happen. Right there. Yeah, you know. I wish, I wish you almost said her but name. But you know what? <laughs> I wish she would. Yes, you're I wish don't she would get name. on there and say don't some say shit. You know, you know this is Yezzy Ortiz's ex. Oh, okay. So he feels some type of way. No, so, I don't. Okay, li listen, I'm going to save you, Gio. I'm going to save you, Gio. Shut rider. the fuck <laughs> up, okay? Why? But you know what? I don't care what anybody says, even if... He they say my sex is this or that. Because so look, right now you can't hear because you refuse to put on headphones. We're playing Nicki Minaj. Bees in the chat. <laughs> Hold on one second. I was good. I, oh, you so, had your own thing set up. For that? I did. Go ahead. Sorry. So Save me. Look, okay. Sorry, you can get it up now. So, <laughs> your past relationship with Molly Mall. Yes. You know, oh, and Molly Mall just slid in her DMs the other day. Too. God damn. <laughs> well, what the 
That's cool with me. I, I don't mean, care. Shit, we keep it one thousand on this yeah, show. Let's Shout do out to that. Molly Mo. I grew up. I, no, I, I, you listen. guys, I totally don't care. <laughs> no, honestly, listen, about I, that. I love you, Melissa, and, and thank you for doing this show with me. Um, I, I, can't, can't speak. Okay. No, I grew up with um, Molly Mo. We I've known each other. We've known each other for a long time. She already knows that. But, so I, I, I personally think it's just because he he wants to come on the show. That's that's what I think that it is. I listen, don't know Melissa, you're beautiful. I mean, if I was a guy, I mean, I would slide in your DMs if you like. Goes but damn, oh, you. The you know, <laughs> I don't. You know how you know how it is. So <laughs> I wouldn't ever say it's for this reason or that. Like, look at you. Of course, who Thank wouldn't you. want to talk to you? I, 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 you I, both I, got an amazing I, ass. I, appre- I appreciate. I appreciate how mature you are about the whole thing. Yeah. Okay, so look. So Molly Mall is your ex. Yes, you dated Lil Fizz, and now. Well, I'm not sure what your current situation is with Safari, but I'm trying to get a. a, a she just went on a date the other night with Rosa Costa. Okay, so hold on, I'm just trying to get a pin, like pinpoint <laughs> what your type is because God I don't damn, really you are have just a all type. Over the place. I know, girl. Like, okay, listen. So I met Molly. I call him Jamal when I was really, mm-hmm. I was young, you know. So it's like, it was like a chase for me, and like you know, that was the first guy I really cared about in a long time, and he knew my brother, so like we were close in different ways. So it was like you know. Um, after we had broke up, you know, I was really just like, kind of like getting over my feelings and just, you know, trying to, trying to stretch out what type of guy I liked, because mm-hmm. I'm like, I'm not, this bad boy thing you ain't wanna, really getting to, me anywhere. You, this, switch it up a little bit. you know, this mm-hmm. cheater thing is not really getting me anywhere. This bad mm-hmm. boy thing, this, mm-hmm. you know, whatever. So mm-hmm. then I met Safari and he's like totally opposite, loyal, supportive, funny, funny. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, he was really like, um, what's the word I would say? Like. He Charming. would check on me a oh. lot, call mm-hmm. me a lot, make sure I was he good. Cared about you. you know, <laughs> no, I would say Jamal cared about me too, but it's just differently. Mm-hmm. You right. know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So it was just a different type of relationship. So I was just trying to like, you know, switch it up a little bit. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and is it is it different having because I've never had sex with a um, let's see who I've had sex with Jamaican? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> so is it different having sex with a rapper and an R and B singer? I mean, is Fizz an R and B singer or a rapper? I don't. I think he's. Got, I would gotta ask Louise. I don't know. <laughs> we should know these things. You guys, you guys should, should know. know these. He's a things. rapper, right? Good this, lotion. Oh, I can't. <laughs> did you ever? Did you ever? Okay, so Monice was in his good lotion commercial, right? Right. Video. Video. Yeah. Do you feel like you should have been in the good? Lo- do you care that you weren't in the vi- no, good lotion video? He asked me to do it. Oh, he as did. As you saw. And if you, you said, didn't see, and I said, no, I'm not a video vixen. I don't do videos. No offense to anybody who does. She was but, a video vixen. Well, in her maybe when she was much younger, I'm sure she wouldn't do it now. No, you know what I'm saying. I think well, things, maybe for Drake. <laughs> I think right, but things. I think things have changed in the video vixen image and world. Absolutely and I has. feel like you know me, like I'm. I've. I just. I never have even modeled. I never did magazine covers. Like I don't even know what I would do in a music video. Seriously, <laughs> I wouldn't even be. I don't even know. You would so, just be pretty. Trust you know, me. That's what I did. So you, for me, I just, it wasn't my thing. What I love about Nikki, for real, yeah. and hopefully people <laughs> see is like, literally, you're just a regular girl. Yeah, yeah I see that. Can you dance? Not really. See, I, I get try. That, she, I get that vibe she, from she you, though. Have, you do? I get that uncoordinated <laughs> see, vibe are, from you. Yeah, I'm coordinated. <laughs> I just, I don't do a lot of tricks. I mean, I'm she's coordinated, not doing though. the Roger Rabbit in the right. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> like, I, I can do a couple of tricks, but it ain't going to be like. Too. Right, you Speak- ain't gonna be like you know Malaya. Uh, oh <laughs> yeah, yeah. Got okay. You. Speaking of tricks, no, yeah. I'm just playing. I don't have any. There. Okay, so Safari, uh, he was recently on our show. We asked him who's better in bed, you or Nicki Minaj, and, and he, he said, said Nicki, Nicki, of course. <laughs> <laughs> but he just said Nicki. Yeah. Like, oh. Yeah. Do you like Safari? Like, where where are you at with Safari now? We're friends. Mm-hmm. I think he's a great guy. I just think that in life, right now, as of now, maybe the timing is off. But we're just looking for two different things. You know. Right now, I'm really focused. And it might not even just be Safari. Just anybody, unfortunately, who comes into my life right now. I'm really, like, you can't focused make a on priority. my business. Like, I'm not, you know, I'm t- picking up for all these things that are going on in my life. Mm-hmm. I've, it's only been, like, a year for me. So, I'm dealing with a lot. And I'm just trying to do as much as I can. So, See, I haven't. O- only Nikki can say, I got two businesses. So, I got to have a boyfriend and a girlfriend, too. I got to have two things at no, the same time. No, I was time. just dating, having fun. I think what happened to me, it wasn't that I was trying to have two relationships, mm-hmm. to clarify. I was dating two people after my brother passed away. May he rest in peace. And for me, it was like I was dealing with hurt. So I was trying to distract myself from mm-hmm. things that was going on in my life. Mm-hmm. And I was literally focused on my work. I literally, like my family was like, what's going on with you? Like, you just working so much. Like, you not even taking care of yourself. I was trying to drown myself into things that would not. I wouldn't think about stuff. Mm-hmm. You know so, what I'm saying? So, mm-hmm. so That's what I was going through. So I got a text from Safari the other day when the episode aired. Our episode aired the other day um, with the whole Rosa thing 
And he texted me and he said he texted you too that we were all shady boots. Did you get that text? Yeah. I said shady boots for what? I'm just doing my job and just saying what I what I said I, think. I wasn't even shady. I didn't but, even say But that here's thing. where I'm getting hit online and people are doing videos and tutorials and shit about how messy I am. Right. I Wow, I, Jason. I, tutorials? <laughs> me. Yeah. Holly, <laughs> Hollywood Unlocked does its job and we're supposed to do our job mm. well. We find things online. We see things that are happening. Nikki is my friend. So just to go back a little bit. So I hooked Nikki and Rosa up because when Rosa came to me and she had just come out of a relationship with a guy, mm -hmm. she was like, I'm done. Fuck all that. The shit didn't work. I, I need right. a girl. Hook me up. I'm not going to say what calls I made, but I made a couple calls. But the per then I was talking to Nikki and Nikki was saying how beautiful she was. So I thought, okay, well, I would put them together and right. boom. <laughs> so then... So, uh, so I, I actually played the matchmaker. I thought I did a good thing. Then here comes Nikki and Safari. Unbeknownst to me, mm -hmm. spell it. Doing dirt, and unbeknownst. <laughs> I mean, it wasn't really dirt because I'm not in a relationship with anybody, and they both made it. Like Safari wanted to be in a relationship, but Rosa, whether they showed it or not, was like, "Let's just take our time and figure yeah. it out." We both had bad men in our life, and we were both kind of going through the same thing. So it was like, I didn't feel like maybe I. Okay, I wasn't all the way honest. I will admit to that, and I could have been all the way honest and truthful with them. But at the same time, it's like we not even all the way exclusive. Like I don't know so if you got another you man in your life. I don't know if he has another woman in his life. Like, what do I really owe you? Because I'm sure there's some things you guys doing that I don't know. Right. That's what right. I was going to ask you. Did I'm you just really the only have... one who got pointed the finger. Yeah, at. I was going to ask you. Did you really have pure intention of telling one of them about the other? Did you ever? Of course. I mean, I wasn't going to keep the whole thing going on, but it's like at the same time, I'm sure they was talking to other people and I didn't know about it. So did you really think it was shady for us at Hollywood Unlocked to put the video up with Rosa? I only with think you, you should have not tagged her. <laughs> I don't care that you posted the video because Shade Room posted it, a bunch of other blogs. It went everywhere. You this know is what the I'm video saying? of the two of you out to dinner the right. other night. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. they went out they to dinner kissing. at Katsuya. Now yeah. you've been in Hollywood for a long time. When you go to Katsuya. Oh yeah. There's cameras know. right outside. Right. Well, they're waiting for yeah, you. Yeah, they're waiting for you. I'm going to tell yeah. you guys, when we go there there was literally 11 almost you know the restaurant closes time. really mm -hmm, early mm -hmm. nobody was there we were like the only ones his phone was dead mm -hmm. okay i only had my phone so when we walked out there was cameras everywhere so i'm like either somebody at the restaurant called him because i remember his phone was dead and he Wait, was like was him Safari. 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 Okay, yes. So Safari, his yeah. phone was dead and we <laughs> were sitting there eating or whatever. So we left. Either someone at the restaurant called or this old lady walked up to us and I didn't even know who she was. She was like, can I have a picture with you guys? She kept saying, you're so beautiful. So I thought it was just like a weird like yeah. lady mm -hmm. who wanted a picture with me. Mm -hmm. And when we walked out, it was like everywhere. No, Castle is known for calling. But but when we're in the scene and I'm t and I'm and I post the video, I, I didn't post the video. One mm -hmm. of my editors did. Yes, they added Rosa Costa too because. Yeah, they tagged her. I mean, mm -hmm. shit, I don't know. It's, I don't think that that's messy i think mm. that that's just like thoroughly reporting it's what's messy, happening but it's cool okay so so <laughs> got some nice ass eyebrows oh, for God. <laughs> she, she <laughs> has a girlfriend and a boyfriend I, I think. yeah so i don't have anybody actually no surprise my bro i would never she's unavailable actually i'm totally single okay i was gonna ask like, I, let's I, clear, clear the wait can i finish the okay thought? yes go ahead so when you sorry came, guys so when, watching this so when you single. all came out what i thought was funny in the scene is when we were sitting there talking to you were talking about coming out with these flowers <laughs> Friends don't just give somebody like a bouquet of fucking roses. Well, actually, Jason, you tried it. since you want to know, I get flowers sent to my house every single week. Damn. By who? I have a lot of friends. Mm. Put a I bomb do. effect in here and but post. But to be honest, truthfully, <laughs> all the way truthful, my mom brings them every week. <laughs> That's cute. I swear. Okay. She, every week. There's new flowers in Nikki's house. Okay, so... Erica Mena is very active on social media. <laughs> right. And your storyline with Rosa has sparked, you know, obviously yeah. a frenzy of, of attention, tweets, et cetera, et cetera. Um, somebody basically said that Erica Mena deserves a check because she started the whole, you know, date a girl thing on Love and Hip Hop. And she basically concurred with that sentiment. What What's your thoughts on... Erica basically feeling like she's taking credit for, you know, the starting the lesbian. So now since Erica yeah. Mena basically since she was a lesbian on TV and now you're in a lesbian relationship that you stole her swag. Yeah. Well, I think that is Erica Mena. The, I, I mean, me and Erica are cool, but I don't think she's the only lesbian or bisexual in the world. So maybe a lot of people owe her a check. Mm. Mm. Do, well, you, then, do you? I, I yeah. saw an article yesterday in um, what? Where was it? Uh, it was a prominent Anyway, Huffington Post, mm -hmm. where Hazelie and uh, Miles, who are no longer on our show, are talking about how Love and Hip Hop is failing basically as a result of them leaving. What do you think about <laughs> these former cast members of, 
our franchise I mean, who you know, say I feel things like about the some show. people did play a p- prominent role in the show. And, you know, I think a lot some people really did gain a fan base. But I don't think just because of one person leaving or two people or whatever it is leaving that, you know, it's because of a particular person that our ratings are down or up or whatever it is. You know what I'm saying? That's just even if me if I left, that's like saying, OK, the show is going to fail epically because of me. No, I'm only one person. So I'm not the only thing that's going to keep this show going and stimulating. That's just like me being petty saying that. If you could say one thing to Nicki Minaj, what would you say? I think she's very talented and I respect what she's done for women. I don't feel like there's any like I'm not shady. I give compliments when due, you know, and I feel like she's really opened doors for women. And, you know, like in this industry, it's really hard for girls. Like people don't respect the women as much as they do the men. And they don't think that like, you know, like the rappers and, you know, just in general. So it's like she really like motivated a lot of women. And, you know, I respect her for that. Do you feel that Safari might have used you as a prop to kind of make her jealous? I hope not. So, mm. so I would not like to feel like anybody used me. Mm-hmm. So you've been a victim of the Barbie army. Um, yeah. What was your experience like dealing with all of the Barbies on your timeline? Mm. I mean, it was really insane, to be honest with you, because like they were like, bitch, you'll never be Nicki Minaj. You'll never have more money than her. You're you're this and you're that. I'm going to clarify this, whether it's me and Joe Schmo or it's Kim Kardashian or it's Nicki or it's Obama, anybody in this world, nobody in this world is better than anybody for money or fame because we all come and go the same exact way. Mm -hmm. And that's what I think people are really ignorant to understand is like, I'm not better than nobody in this world Mm -hmm. and neither are you or anybody, you know? So it's like, I think it's really small minded for people to think because you have more money or fame that you're better, but you're not because we all deal with the same shit in life. So there's a lot of criticism that people feel and there was, you know, speculation that um, Safari uses women for money. Do you ever felt like he used you for money or do you ever felt like... Safari never got any money out of me so I don't, I can't personally say he did. But what was it like dating him because, I mean, I'm sure that your bank accounts look very, very differently. There's... You're shady as fuck. I'm not being shady. You know, it's like we, we just, when Safari and I hung out, we would like really like we were really not trying to be like out there like that. So he came over, we would go like, we would work out together, we would walk together. We would like really just so, spend a lot of time, but it wasn't about, oh, let's go to this, let's go to this top restaurant, let's go here, let's go there. It was really more personal, like let's do this, let's let's do that. Like, you know, just like hang out. We just hung out like friends. Like mm-hmm. he caught a so, lot, he caught a lot of heat, because I'm sitting here looking at this Rolex on your wrist, and he caught a lot of heat giving you that little raggedy ass um <laughs> That was see, but Kors. that's what she said. She, I think. Let me tell you, in the fifth grade, I remember <sighs> being taught how to make friendship friendship bracelets. That's shit you do. With I people think she who, really admired that though. That he was gave sweet. her a friendship bracelet. He it was gave her. He gave her Jamaican like some like Jamaican thing he made with some beads what, and some string. Mean shit to you, Wait, babe. get in the rain. Talk on the mic. Oh. <laughs> what doesn't mean like you know like it was more of a sentimental thing and that's what mm-hmm. i think made safari different from the other men i was with like jamal gave me a lot of diamond bracelets and jewelry and earrings and stuff safari gave me some like bracelet that <laughs> was just like you know it was just like a i guess it meant if something for get- <laughs> the jamaican culture yeah. i didn't really know much about it. i knew it was like a bob marley bracelet right mm-hmm. okay. type of thing oh. that said one love on it but it was just that's what made him different from the guys i was nikki. dating you know she what i'm saying own Rolex, hold, on, so. hold on nikki so when he, I didn't look down on him no, for no, no, giving no. it to me but when he at ga- all. When he gave you that shoestring and the beads, oh my god! Did you <laughs> did you think well maybe this isn't going in the, the way I thought it was? Or? <laughs> I don't look at people for money mm-hmm. because none of the men could do for me the way I can. So I never thought it was like that. People with him or anybody, yes. I just never did. It's the thought that counts. I so, never ever so have been have, like, if a guy gave me something, I'm like, oh, this ain't going the way because none of y'all can do anything the way okay, I can. So Melissa, yeah, when you were that. dating Flo Rida, oh for fuck's sake! I remember <laughs> he gave you. I remember he gave you that you, beautiful. D- listen, necklace. Listen, I just want everybody to understand that there's only there's one reason why he was bringing up Flo, and that's because he why? doesn't. He just can't. There's no other relationship. Look to, at this. Okay, face. okay, stop. I'm gonna shut up right okay. now. <laughs> you were saying. Uh, <laughs> Shout out to Mark Lamont Hill. You, you know she used that? to date Mark Lamont Hill. Did you know that? Oh, oh, oh. shit! They the one that sounds like Charlamagne. Really shady to him the last time I had a VH1 live, but I don't remember what I said. Yo, he sounds just like Charlamagne. But did you miss the point that I said Melissa and him used to date? Really? Yeah. <laughs> She does. She owns anyway, let me stop. Telling yeah, we did. I mean, I, I adore. He's a great guy. I adore Mark. He is. He is awesome. Let's not talk about who you date. I could get my my geek. My Let's not talk about who Jason dates. I don't date. We've anybody. been on set and we've picked up a lot of boyfriends together. For him. 
Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> right along. We have not done yeah. that. Jason, all Jason Talk has a thing the- for the extras. He meets on he'll be like, Nikki, give me your phone really quick. Let me get his number. I'm like, Jason, you really gonna pick up this guy that you just met First on set? First of all, what everybody in the this room is happening like seriously, what like everybody is living for in the room is that you're blowing up my spot, but I don't give a fuck. Shout yeah, because he blew up everybody's you spot. Blow up everybody else's Spot. I haven't blown everything up yet. Pause. You were asking about the necklace oh, yeah. or whatever okay, so it was. Flo Rida. The necklace that he <laughs> What did yeah, he get anyways. you? So when he got you well, yeah, what did he get you? Um he got me uh, a diamond necklace. So now if that he that he took back. <laughs> yeah. Indian Touché. giver. Did he really? Yes. Well, yeah. That's did, awful. Did I know. Did whack, ask, isn't it? Which did, is why you keep asking, will we ever get back together? No. Wait, he asked you for a back? No, he did not. It he, just miraculously disappeared out of all my shit. Me Maybe too. Wow. <laughs> Damn. Why did he do that shit? We did whatever. You, know why you knew you all were gonna break up or something? I don't know what it was. I really don't care. Well, ask, How well, did you get, but who took it? How did you find out? Uh, girl, it was there well, one day wait. and Wait, gone. We, we will ask yeah. Flo Rida when he comes on the he show. He is never going to be on the oh, show. I will, I guess where I'll be that day where? on the other side of the fucking world. <laughs> okay, well, really quick. With, my question was you, if a man okay, bought you a diamond necklace, would you let him come put some some like Annie's shoestring around your You're neck? You're so with, like, shallow. Wait, wait, if he bought me a diamond necklace, would he? Okay, would it, let me just say it because I have to address. Gio keep throwing these little jabs. See, this is the problem. <laughs> I'm speaking specifically for the population that can afford a Rolex. I can't afford a Rolex right now, but if I could, then I will weigh in. So stop, because I'm just saying, if a girl brought you bought you a diamond Rolex, and then you got with another girl, and she brought you like a Metro Pass to get on the train, you would kind of be like, this "Well, no." Levels. Here's the thing: is that when you date uh, when you date a man of means, when you date somebody, you understand what kind of tax bracket they're uh, operating you know inside they, of. So you got. don't you don't hold you don't hold a guy to a to the same standard of the person, multimillionaire right. you just finished dating. Like if he's a bus driver and you just got off dating a multimillionaire, you're not going to hold the bus driver to the same standard. So when Molly Mall slid in your DMs, did you think that you should slide back to see, just say, hey, Nikki's coming on the show? Because you should have did your research. Like Nikki's coming on the show. Do you want to tell us anything? No, I didn't feel the need to do that at all. Okay. I, I, I honestly felt like he wanted to. He wants to come on the show. That's all okay. I thought. But, you so, know, this is beautiful. So, Nikki, so he could have just wanted to talk so to you. So, Nikki, you, you know just opened up. Maybe I just didn't want to. Nikki pers- just opened up about the sex tape between her and Molly. We're not going to get too far in. No pun intended. Um, mm. <laughs> did you, do you, have you talked to him about him putting that out? He put out a sex tape He says he didn't guys. do it. This is new to me. Okay, listen. Google is your friend. Shit. I would never. Okay, listen. Let me clarify something really quick. <laughs> This is why people I'm not can't saying eat on the that air. I'm not saying that he did do it. I just know that 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 video was not in my possession. Mm-hmm. People are trying to say, you know, oh, you're a whore. Or you're this and that. that was my oh, partner man. for three years. I don't think that that makes me a whore. Did I plan for the world to see it? Absolutely not. This was a month after my brother passed. I was already going oh, through a lot of stuff in my life. Really then were. on top of it, I was in school. My sister calls me in class taking my final. She's like, I need you to talk to you really quick. My mom said, That's awful. so I'm like, oh my God, this is not happening to me right now. So I'm telling the teacher I'm leaving. My mom calls me. She said, you better fucking stay and take your test. So I'm already like, oh shit, this mm-hmm. is too much. But I, I handled my business and I stayed. So, you know, when this is happening, I just like immediately I'm cussing him out. I'm like, did you really do this to me after what I'm going through right now? He said he didn't do it. Mm-hmm. I can't sit here and accuse and point fingers. He said he lost his phone. I don't know what it is. I really will never know. But I just know I didn't have that in my hand. Now, and if what you people were to think, drop your own sex tape, it would have been you would have been is, in parachutes. And this is what I'm saying. Fucking. People are saying, "Oh, you want to be like him? You think a sex tape is gonna make you pop it?" Okay, let's clarify this. If I was gonna make a sex tape, I'll be sucking dick and fucking and doing all kind of tricks. Mm-hmm. I was literally just literally. First off, I was beyond drunk. You could see it in my face. Passed out nearly. Looked like I was asleep. Mm-hmm. Okay, so it's like if I'm gonna make a video, it's gonna be make sure it's bomb. It's gonna I'm not gonna do it like that. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. That was nothing. That was like a 15, 20 second clip that of nothing. Mm-hmm. You know? Would, so, would you ever do a sex tape? Um, no. For myself to have to see how talented no, no. I am, meaning that's like, different. Meaning like, 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 if Vivid said we'd give you Vivid a million dollars. Vivid already contacted me, and I told him no. You know, like people really try to make me capitalize off that video. I've had people call me Vivid, including mm-hmm. managers, and I said no, I'm not capitalizing off this. This is not something that I want to. I want, I'm a brand. This is not something I was proud of happening to me. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But thank God it kind of swiped under the rug, and it's just been over and done with. But. Right. You know, I don't I don't try to make money off certain things like that wasn't a proud thing for me. So do you that think would, Kim, that's awful. But do you think Kim Kardashian, who clearly had it, used it as a springboard for her career? That do you think it's so a bad boring. thing? No, I mean, if that's what you want to do to each his own. But 
You know, for me, it's like I'm a businesswoman and I make money. My family is like successful. Thank God. It's like I don't have to do that. Not saying she did or anybody else, but it's just not a direction I chose to go in. You know, but really, who has it worked out for after Kim? Nicole Naren tried to put one out with Colin Farrell. Me from Atlanta Housewives. Did it really really work out for her? Did it really work out for her? Not to the level of Kim fucking Kardashian. It didn't work out. No, not in my opinion. It didn't work out for her. Mind you, was the worst sex type ever. People are really just yeah talking to the mic. Oh, sorry. I think when people. People do that. They're going to really just think you're doing it just to be, you know, mm-hmm. to make like to be like Kim and make more money. And it's like, that's only going to like, give that you buzz model. for that okay, moment. So and then it's over of, with. Speaking of Kim Kardashian, Ray J got married. I went to the wedding. You didn't. Right. Now. So I remember back last year when you were going through what you were going through with your brother's death. Princess was there yeah, for Princess you. Yeah, Princess was at my brother's funeral. So mm-hmm. why weren't you at the wedding? I think you're going to have to ask her. I mean, I, I'm just as shocked as you guys are. You know, I. Honestly, I'm going to tell you, you know, either I was thinking it could be one of two things, whether it was because I'm friends with T.R. Marie or whether, you know, maybe Princess has her own insecurities as a woman. I hope not, because if you're getting a ring down your hand, whatever it is, you know, I feel like those that you got your man and it's over with. It should be done with, you know, like I've never I'm, I'm one of the only people on the cast who's never had any interaction or mess around with Ray J. I knew him because he he used my family's club for a video. Mm-hmm. So for me, it's like, it's where did business. this yeah, it's business. So I never knew where this tension came from. Like, it's, and it's, it's like it's more likely than not the relationship that you have with Tierra Marie because they don't have a very good relationship. But, at but all. No, but you know, I don't know. Like, the, what the spiral came in our relationship when last year, like we were shooting, and you know, like. I guess she had heard he was being a little flirty with me mm-hmm. because he was a little drunk. I didn't pay no mind to it, but she had texted well, me. On his green screen the other day, he was a little... He, she had texted me and was like, I'm not with the fake shit. But I'm like, first off, I'm the one who respected you. Like, I didn't even flirt back. You know, mm-hmm. like, I got up and walked off the set. Mm-hmm. So, if anything you and your partner should have a conversation. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? After that, I was like, you know, if you want to text me, like assuming something, at least give me the courtesy and call me because we really were friends. We went to dinner together. She came over to my house. Mm-hmm. We would text and talk. She came to my brother's funeral, which meant a lot to me. So she was one of the few cast members that really came in here. Mm-hmm. So for me, it's like, give me the courtesy of calling me. After that, we had never spoke. She never called me. And then I just well, wasn't invited. I to just thought of something. Well, you know, you, me, you and Floyd hang out a lot. Right. We're all friends. Right. Um, do you think maybe because now she knows you're hanging out with Floyd, that's what it is? Because Floyd being her ex and I don't know. No, I, I really think that it really has. I'm, the, I'm basing it off the last conversation we had, which was I'm not with the fake shit and what happened on set prior. Yeah, yeah. So mm-hmm. I, I'm basing it off that. Like I said, it could be because of Tia Marie, it could be because of Floyd. Who knows? All I know is that, you know, I felt like a phone call was well-deserved to me because at the end of the day, like, yeah, there are, this is a show, but some people you you are friends with. And, you know, I wish her and Ray J nothing but the best. I congratulate them. I'm not salty. Did you feel some type of way that you could, weren't invited? Yeah, because people, so much, ran, like many random people were there that I know she doesn't have relationships with. Yeah. You yeah. know, and it's just like when her and Ray J broke up, I knew that I had been a friend, you mm-hmm. know, and she when my brother passed, she was a friend That's to a me. That's a real mm-hmm. important time. So yeah. it was just like, you know, like I was a little confused, but, you know, I'm not salty. I wish them the best. And I wasn't there. I wasn't Maybe, present. Maybe uh, it's possible that it was some jealousy on her behalf because when, you know, Safari was having the conversation with Lil Fizz and Ray J, Ray J's green screen, he was very vocal about your level of hotness, <laughs> you know? So maybe they're... So if Ray J and Princess uh, broke up or got a divorce, would you ever consider being with Ray J? I'd never... I, I never have an, like had like that relationship with him, mm-hmm. even prior and bef- after. That's why I was like, I'm the one bitch you don't have to worry about. Like mm-hmm. all these bitches on the cast fucked him. I didn't. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, why are you like press about me? Mm-hmm. Okay. I don't see how. I don't so okay, I'm sorry. to answer your question, no. Mm-hmm. Okay. So little Brandy, um, we just saw an episode where she gave all her baby's money away to a store. Right. <laughs> What is, you were at that store, right? Oh you were at the God. opening, so right? Sorry. Quit eating on camera, please. So okay, sorry. so when you were at that scene where they were open, where she was opening her shop, and you knew she did, you know she had given all the money away. I didn't even know she had opened a shop, so I was so confused. Like, what the fuck is going on here? Like, I really didn't even know. And then in her speech, she's like telling everyone, like, "Thank you, like all these people, like." Ray J, you doing your thing, Princess? And I'm like, hey, new wait, Nikki did, wait, doing their thing too, wait, girl. Wait, like, you know what's what I up? thought when I watched it? She didn't mention you at all. That's my point. What was that about? I thought you guys were friends because she threw hey, a drink I in my really face. Hey, I really don't defending. know. I was just like, girl, like, 
because she was shouting out Princess Business and Ray J's and then everybody else there. And I'm like, uh, nude by Nikki, because we know my shit doing better than all y'all together. So what's up? Like, <laughs> <laughs> And so why do you think she didn't shout you out? Did you think that Listen, was shame? I think that every, these people, whether I just feel like it is what like, I think people are shady. I think people are very, you think people have their are jealous? jealousy and it's insecurities, you know? So... <laughs> so do you so Moniz did check yourself where she did a video talking about her giving the money away and I know last season last season on the reunion everybody tried to attack Moniz for being a bad mom what did you think do you think that makes Brandy a bad mom no I would say that as a mother like because I don't have kids mm -hmm. but I do feel like as a mother like you have to be conscious with your child's money and I feel like when you have a husband and you're a partner you consult with yeah. each other what you do with your child's money I yeah. agree I definitely think that was a faulty move on her behalf for sure well, I haven't heard the word faulty in a long time yeah. <laughs> Come on, so, we gotta know. so would you ever date Floyd Mayweather? Because I mean, both of you have your own money. He he clearly thinks that you're an amazing person. He loves your spirit. I mean, <laughs> he wanted to send me questions to ask you today, but I haven't talked to him in a couple of days. But oh my god, he would want to ask questions. Yeah, you and Floyd are actually really fun I can see together. That. No, it's fun. I can like see all that. of the yeah. four of we us, we have a great time when yeah. we hang out. When the four of us hang out, you'll hang out with us all one time. But when the four of us hang out, it's just really you fun. You gotta fix your phone though, Giovanni. <laughs> no, right? Jesus hey, Christ. Come on. So what do, you, what do you want to say to Floyd? Because he's listening. <laughs> I love Floyd. I think he's a boss. I think he's cool. We have a great time. He's like, you know, he's really funny. I mean, I really respect him because he's really like intellectual. Like, I think people don't know that about him. He, 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 he gives me advice sometimes when I act out on the internet. He's like, you're above that. Like, you know, just remember who you are and what you bring to the table. Like, don't let people use you. Don't let people bring you down, your spirit down. So, like, I really appreciate, like, a man of his caliber really, like, taking the time to really, like, talk to me about certain things. And so I just really have, like, a genuine friendship. Like, I really respect him for that. That's dope. Yeah, Floyd, Floyd is super cool. You said Flo. Flo <laughs> oh, <laughs> shit. You did. I did we not. You Flo said Flo. Flo. I did not. Yes, did. I feel like Floyd. Floyd, like he never acted like he's better than anybody because of his yeah. money, and I really respect that too. He, like, did, I, he yeah, reminds me of my family, like very humble, just giving person. So you know, I really appreciate seeing people like that. That's Off topic, love Nikki. Yeah, I love her. Off topic. <laughs> uh, I want to be one of them. Uh, Strippers can I get some at the new strip No, I want some. You some... want my briefs? Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, we. But not. you have I'm, to like Giovanni. Like, if you take a, you have to take a picture and yeah. send it to me to post. Yeah, yeah. You gonna do see? It? I got big legs. Wait, so, can I just say, let, <laughs> thank you for bringing up her nude by Nikki online because we're yeah. gonna talk about that in a minute. But let me just say to every guy out there that knows how I'm her friend. Stop fucking DMing me about me reaching out to her for you to shoot in her campaign. Because I'm going to tell you what I'm going to start doing. Send me a nude photo so yes, I can see first. Yes, send the dick pic. The dick and print, then and I'll then let you know. We'll Matter of fact, okay. Well, send the dick print to Jason. I was going to say, what's the criteria for a man to model, you know, nude by Nikki, Melissa, but like, the honestly, male I'm, line? Does he have to be well endowed? I mean, just no. to show off the right. Well endowed. I mean, to show like, off the right. You, you ain't got to have a big dick to wear underwear. Really what the fuck? That, to show off the flexibility. In no, I just, I don't really think that, you know, I'm really open. Like if you see my line, I think the reason I've gotten so much positive feedback, even with the women is <laughs> if I find you attractive like that, like, and you know, I just, not just me, myself, but my line has a bunch of different colors, sizes, ethnicities, everything going on. So I'm fairly open. And mm. Melissa, mm. men don't, I, it's, even me don't mm -hmm. look at the bulge in some draw photos okay so then why did Justin Bieber have his penis enhanced for his Calvin Klein ads exactly. which he Justin says that he didn't Bieber, but whatever prop because he has millions of fans that he wants to talk people in Hollywood know how to make people talk so uh, we're gonna play this game real quick I don't know the name of the game yet because we haven't given it one but there's this red bag uh, and I'm gonna dig in it I'm gonna put my hand in a pause and I'm gonna pull out something and I'm gonna ask you a question and you have to answer okay <laughs> the question is have you ever been with someone from the same sex we already know the answer okay. oh Jason and that was it for you yes no that was okay, <laughs> no, no. okay wait what is the worst way you've ever broken up with someone hmm. over the phone really you just I phoned mean, it in yeah that was so impersonal Jason, you really like digging or like asking like a lot. I thought you picked one thing. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. You okay. picked all, all, of, all of them? I yeah. kind of asked this question already. Let me see something else. I'm going to find some. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Why you get perched up? Describe <laughs> the biggest dick you've ever seen. Oh, God. I didn't write these questions. I said. Uh -huh. It was like 10 inches. Oh, that's. <laughs> it was. <laughs> oh, shut the fuck up, Gio. There you go it with was the kind of big. It was light skin. Mm. Did it play basketball? <laughs> no, it did not. It's 
not Austin. That's who you're thinking about. He like really liked my ex boyfriend Austin. I didn't see Austin who day. Mm-hmm. Austin, like, see, I told you he really liked that. He was no, super fine. He we just used to have the same He's gonna get who married. Play for? Just so you know, I think is he really? I don't know. Uh, huh? <laughs> Who? He okay. seemed kind of funny. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, here's another one. Uh, let's see. Who is the best celebrity you've ever kissed? I haven't really kissed a lot of celebrities. That's kind of Jocelyn like, Hernandez. I don't even know. So Ooh. Jocelyn, for whatever reason, doesn't like me. She was on Facetime no, with Nikki she and told say her. That. I think people just like they just from first se- second season they just think you're like an asshole for throwing a drink in a girl's face. But if they know you, they'll really <laughs> love you. I'm just saying from what people think, you know. Her and Hazel used to be roommates. So what was your relationship Years like with, J- with Jocelyn? <laughs> we're just skating the fuck over that. Um, I just, we, <laughs> nothing. We were just super cool. Like, I'm going to say one thing that people don't know about Jocelyn. She has been doing this TV stuff for a long time. And Jocelyn's a little bit older than me. So sometimes when I'm really stressed out about the show and stuff, I'll FaceTime her in the gym and she'll really be like, look at you. Like, look at the level you're on. And then look at some of these people. Like, just focus on your business. She's like, she taught me, she's like, I've never watched one episode I'm on. She's like, I don't argue on social media. I don't even read the comments on the day the show airs. She's like, because you, you you have to understand that this is something you chose to do for mm-hmm. everybody to see. Everyone is going to judge you. And this is going to be, you can't let it consume your life. Mm-hmm. And so- I really have like, Really appreciated her for that because before I read every comment, I argued oh, back that's with everybody. Just the way to I would just go crazy, and yeah. now I'm like, you know what? There's been like three episodes I've been on that I haven't even seen yet. Right. You know, and I don't even argue. I don't even like be on my social media. Like when there's, I just post a sale on New by Nikki, get my money going up. Mm-hmm. While these people are angry arguing, I'm making money. So, mm-hmm. hey, what do you think is the biggest source of the criticism that you receive because of my surgery? Mm-hmm. Like I think people have like all you can say is like oh she's so fake she's so fake she's so fake but it's like I admit to it and I paid for it so who's mad you or me? How much money? <laughs> how much money have you spent on surgery? Total? I really don't know. I mean I think someone threw out like some crazy obnoxious number like a hundred thousand and I'm like damn I'm balling like that on a hundred thousand. <laughs> I am balling like that but I didn't spend a hundred thousand on surgery. Okay. I think just because you get surgery doesn't make you beautiful or whatever it is. I think it's your attitude and your mindset. You can get a million things done and be the most insecure wag bitch in the world. You know what I'm saying? But, yeah. but you just said, but you just said on the Breakfast Club that you're done. Oh yeah, I'm done. So, so let's talk about the surgery journey. What was the first procedure that you ever had done? I did my nose. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Did you have like a deviated septum or something? I did have a deviated septum, and then like I wanted it to be more contour, you know. So mm-hmm. I made you didn't it want a nigga nose. <laughs> no, I just, you know, I wanted it a little more pooch, a little smaller. So, you know. You know what? Can I say something? Without me, without, I never, without you saying that, I would have never thought you had your nose done. Well, what I love about well, her is that you are open about your surgery. And, mm-hmm. and, and I mean, like, of course. It looks great. Thank yeah, I mean. You. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. in person I look a lot more natural than in TV. I don't even like how I look on camera. So I think people <laughs> think I look like crazy animated, like Barbie, botch, whatever the fuck. No, who called about. you botch Barbie? Um, Moniz did. Mm-hmm. So what do you so do you think Monice is jealous of you? Um, it's something going on in her mind because it's like you talk about me every day. You retweet negative comments about me. You talk about me on interviews like either you want to fuck me or like something <laughs> is going on where you are really like Damn. consumed Obsessed. by me. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Because like me, like I don't think about you at mm-hmm. all. Like not just her, like people in my life. It's like I'm working on my business. My priorities are up, like my business, my family, my business, and then whatever else falls mm-hmm. underneath. But mm-hmm. I'm definitely not on in the internet being a bully and a thug, retweeting negative shit. Like I don't got time for that. And I think right. when you're busy with a business or build business with a brand, build, busy with a brand or a business or a relationship or your family or things that actually matter, you don't have time to go and do random interviews or tweeting and other shit. I mean, I, I think a, you should focus on your brand and your business and your family, like whatever your priorities have to be together. So, well, this is a know. this is a legitimate question for two people that are. On on the same show as Moniece. Uh, you know, when Jason came on the show, he asked me for my advice, you know, what should I do? I was just like, strategize, just know why you're going on the show, whatever brand it is that you wanna, you know, wanna push, you wanna publicize, understand that that is the end goal at all right. times, you know, and to stay focused on that. Um, so for people like me who don't know, what what is Moniece working on? Like, what does she have? I think she, music, she have a clothing I, store? I really don't know, music, like don't know. what these, I don't know. I, I honestly, Melissa. We know not, Brandy tried to open up a store with her child. I'm focused on myself. I don't know what these people are doing, but okay. I'm not even gonna say like 
Monice has a great voice, so I don't know why yes, she hasn't yes, made a mixtape or came out with an album. Like you sitting mm-hmm. here being negative and talking about me, but like you need to focus on your 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 brand and your business. You know what I'm saying? So it's like I'm not even a hater. Like she has a great voice, but yeah. use this platform to do something with well, that. And when you know she says mean? to me that she doesn't understand why we always talk about her, she does things that are in the news for people to talk about. Do you think it's a way to stay relevant? Or Absolutely. To try to stay relevant? I think that you picking on on Nikki all day is like for you to stay relevant. Like you know what I'm saying? Understand that I'm the bitch who did it right. Obviously, you talk about me every single day, so. Yeah. Okay, so let's talk about our businesses because we're almost done. So, Nude by Nikki. Tell us about Nude by Nikki. Uh, Nude by Nikki is a lingerie line intimate apparel. So, I've opened, I've, you know, did it for men and women because I know the boys wanted something as well. And I'm actually dropping a new collection in a week. I'm adding a plus size collection for the girls. So I'm just really working on that. It's doing great. And, you know, I'm I'm just really happy with how it's come along. A lot of people have not done lingerie. So I'm really, really proud of myself for that. Mm -hmm. And Rosa modeled for. Yeah. Yeah. That was- and you know, I've seen like, you know, Amber Rose has worn my stuff mm-hmm. and you know, um, Chris Bosch's wife, Adrian, she bought from me, you know, just like a lot of the girls, like I've sent stuff to Kylie. So I've been really, really proud of my brand for how it's expanded. Speaking of, oh, wait, wait, hold wait, on. Wait, 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 wait. Okay. okay. So I don't know if you, thank you for just triggered something. So, um, Nelly tried to slap me. I, you know, <laughs> I told you about that. No. Oh, Cat I forgot Daddy. About that. Okay. So anyway, he clapped all of my face. You actually gifted Chantel Jackson some clothes. What happened when you do- dropped them off? I mean, like, it was really impersonal. It was just kind of like, thanks, you know? <laughs> and it's like, whoa, like, I, you know, I'm really friendly and sweet. But, like, mm-hmm. prior, like, we've texted before. And she's like, hey, you want to come out? Like, I'm, you know, I'm having an appearance here and stuff. I, unfortunately, was never able to make it. But it was just like, it was just weird. It was very impersonal. Like, I went out of my way and went and dropped it off to her. So it was just a little strange to me. But Nikki is a really nice person. Really she is. So super, you super, are. super sweet. So you mentioned Amber Rose is worn uh, nude by Nikki. Yeah. So she's having her, um, I guess it's now an annual slut walk. And apparently... Nikki's not going to that. I was going to ask she's Nikki not allowed if to she go is going to I won't be in town, okay. actually. You ain't going either. If you were in town, were you? would you participate if Amber asked you to? Because apparently it's growing and there's going to be a panel. And our friend Arian from Love & Hip Hop Atlanta I mean, you know, I, is coming into town for I that. I support Amber. You know, she supported me in my business. So I support her, you know. I, I unfortunately won't be in town that day. Mm-hmm. So I won't be there. But, you know, I, I'm not... Well, not, the sluts will person. walk on. So... <laughs> Okay, so uh, I think that was all we wanted to talk. What other what other business <laughs> well, ventures? Because I know you I have so Slay much- Per Usual. It's like an active wear, and you know, I, it's like kind of like yoga stuff from t shirts, just like fun. Was it called Slay Per Usual? Yeah, it's just like fun stuff. You it's came just- up with that name? Yeah, of course. I, I like did. it. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, you know, because everyone's like Nikki, you slay. So you know, I did something for everybody. And then, of course, there's World Women Crush Wednesdays, the Crazy Horse, if you're in LA. Crazy, crazy girl. girl. Crazy Girl. My bad. Crazy, crazy Horse. That's another, sorry, sorry. That's sorry. another strip club. You shouted out the other, another strip I'm club. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Crazy Girl. Crazy, crazy, crazy Girl. girl. Shout crazy out girls. to Flo. Crazy and not Floyd. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Melissa crazy, just fucking that. Cra- crazy Girls is actually. Crazy Girl 7 3 really Those are Listen, okay. I don't go out. Yeah. Okay, my bad. Sorry. Wait, so, okay, okay. so let me tell you um, really fun thing. So. Uh, me and Nikki, Nikki came down to the hotel one day and we decided we were going to drink. We said we we're going to drink all day long. What hotel? So we start on your birthday. Oh, my God. <laughs> so we started. You want to tell the story? That was really bad. Oh, well, Jason and Floyd were supposed to throw me a birthday party mm-hmm. and they ended up going to Chloe's birthday party, which <laughs> shout out to Chloe Kardashian. I love her so much. But, you know, um, I was going to go with them, but I had no hair and makeup. You know, I'm like mm-hmm. such a brat. So mm-hmm. I didn't go. Oh, Nikki, we'll be back in like an hour or two. Cool. So I'm like sitting there like with my other friends, like, you know, getting even more drunk. And it's like three in the morning. And I was like, what happened to my party? Like, (laughs) where's everybody? I was like, but you're never throwing me a party. And Floyd, I know you're listening. Um, You have to owe me a makeup birthday because that was like really, really sad. (laughs) (laughs) That was the worst birthday I ever had in my life. Like, seriously. (laughs) And they pissed me off. I could have went somewhere else and had a motherfucking party. But I waited for their asses. And guess what? When we, Ain't no in, party, when we walked in, we were so trashed. I just remember saying, "Everyone went to sleep." I was like, "This is my party." <laughs> <Wait>. <laughs> and, and and so, one more thing. So Floyd sends a jet for us, and and, and I said to him, "You got to send us a jet that's like at least nine to fourteen passengers because I can't get on those little Labamba planes, right?" I remember. Oh, she gets on the plane and she's just <laughs> listening to music and drinking it. 
Jason what, what is literally like got, got like a barf bag on his face. Oh, I hate I was like afraid we were going to crash. He was like too. holding my thigh, oh, being yeah. the dramatic. I'm he, terrified of like crying. I had like he had trail mix. He couldn't even eat it. I was like, can I take this home with me? Like Jason was just being so dramatic. Now is that private jet something you have to get accustomed to? Opposed to commercial because I hear it's a whole different type of. Experience. I mean, it's so much more like. I mean, it's easier. just faster. Yeah. You don't have mm-hmm. to. Not inconven- it's so convenient. Like you, you get don't the have to go to the like airport and do all that. 20, 30 minutes. Me and Melissa have been on a, on a private jet. It's the same times. length of time. It's just you just don't have to go through the fucking but airport, I hear, airport feel, experience. I hear, I hear the turbulence is a lot worse. Meh. Mm, on yeah. our plane, that shit was shaking. I was just, <laughs> and, 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 and it, it took extra scary, long to get yeah. there. Yeah. It was like yeah. Yeah. So okay, well, I'm I'm glad Nikki did the show. Thank you guys for having me. It was fun. Girl. And and if anything, Love and Hip Hop is giving me a good friend because we actually yes, talk about sweet great friends for yes. sure. <laughs> okay, so that's it. We're out. <laughs> Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye, guys.